So if you were to ask me, is Sig Sauer German, Swiss, or American? I would answer yes. So Sig Sauer has turned into a very commonly known name in the firearms industry in the last few decades, uh, competing with some big companies like Heckler & Koch or FN or various American manufacturers in the U.S. military scene. But who is Sig and who is Sauer? Who are these people? I mean, first of all, Sig is not a person and Sauer is a German man from the 1750s. Um, but that's the point. People don't really seem to understand where the company came from and which country the company came from, unlike FN coming from Belgium and H&K coming from Germany. So this all came to light recently when I was doing research uh, for the Royal Hong Kong Police Rifles. And I noticed that there was an article out there that said that the SIG 517 was a Swiss-made carbine, which is passionately untrue. That's an American-made carbine, but it does have European branches. Especially, this is the SIG 556 type of rifle. But this is not the SIG 556. This is made in Switzerland. This is a SIG 556. But this is made in America. Alright, so who are the major players in SIG Sauer? How did it come about? Is it Swiss? Is it German? Or is it American? Let's start with SIG in Switzerland. So SIG stands for Schweizer Industriegesellschaft. That's the Swiss industry collective society thing. Um, and it's basically the company started in the 1850s, 1852 to be exact. And they started in the train industry. So drawing from the heavy industrial capacity, of course, they had the expertise in uh, large scale production lines and metallurgy. And so they were able to come up with a wing that also did firearms. And in the 1950s, that's precisely what they did. They made the uh, SG-510, which is the Stimgewehr 57 uh, or PE-57 to some others out there. And this is a delayed blowback rifle out there that shoots the 7.5 by 55 Swiss cartridge. And they also developed in conjunction to this, the next generation small arms to the Swiss armed forces, the P210. What's known at the point as one of the most extensively machined and expensive sidearms that a country could ever adopt. Fitting because Switzerland also adopted the Luger a few decades before that, and it was also an extremely expensive endeavor for them. So that's where SIG comes about. What about Sauer? Now, Sauer, J.P. Sauer & Son from Germany, is an older company than SIG SIG. Uh, they started off in the military arm. Uh, J.P. Sauer & Son, were, they were set up in a, a German city called Zul, which was a sort of a, a, a central point for uh, metal production and metal processing which is important because when you want to make good firearms, you need good alloys, good metal, good raw materials. So that was easy for J.P. Sauer and Son to source. And in fact, they made cannons um, in conjunction with small arms. And even in, let's say, World War II, if you have a 98K like this, if you check the top, of the uh, receiver and you see the code 147, that's a JP Sauer and Son rifle. They also made the Sturmgewehr uh, 44, the STG 44. Uh, what we know as a world's first assault rifle. Now, <clears throat> pushing later on and nowadays, uh, JP Sauer and Son is still in operations and they still make the Sauer uh, action rifles, which the Sig Sauer SSG 3000 is a Sauer action. And this is, let's say, it traces roots to the 200 STR, which is the Scandinavian target rifle that they use up in Scandinavia for a lot of competitions. But 
Sig Sauer, why did they combine at this point, and how did they go to America? So it comes back to the story of Sig, S-I-G, the Swiss Sig. This one. They came out with the um, P220 series of pistols. And at that point, they wanted to get into the export market. They wanted to export this to make some money. But the Swiss government did not allow them to sell military contracts elsewhere. The reason being is because there was Swiss neutrality. They could not be perceived as aiding a foreign nation and taking a political bias elsewhere. And so they needed to figure out uh, some kind of a workaround. So they looked around and they found uh, J.P. Sauernson, which was at this point, side note, located in the south because the Zool plant uh, that they used to be located in were making these. You may ask, why were they making Makarovs in the Zool area? Well, because that fell behind the Iron Curtain and the, the entire Zool operation turned into the Ernst Talman. Uh, actually, funny, it's the Fahrzeug und Jagdwaffen. So they also made vehicles. I digress. Um, as J.P. Sauronson and S.I.G. Sig combined, they went up north to Eckernförde, um, all the way on the Danish border and started at Sig Sauer GmbH which Sig Sauer GmbH made the P210 and subsequently the P226. Now, their big break came from the United States. So as 1984 and 1985 rolled around, one of the biggest prizes on the table was a U.S. military's JSSAP, the Joint Services Small Arms Program, which yielded the XM9, which we later know, uh, know as the M9. Of course, at this point, uh, Sig Sauer submitted the P226 for consideration. And it was neck to neck with the, the, the Breta, the AM92FS. But the Breta won out by $6, being $6 cheaper in the overall package. That was a bit of a sting, but it showed that the Sig Sauer pistol, the P226, had legs. It can compete with some pretty good designs out there. And nearly won out the US contract for all of the pistols that that were that would have been used in the US military. So subsequently they did win the M11, so which was the P228, uh, which was a more compact pistol, which is why you still see some SIGs being used in the US military, the P228. That's how SIG Arms USA started. Initially it was only an import firm. So if we were to look back at this, SIG Arms US initially was only importing SIG Sauer GmbH German pistols that could not be exported from Switzerland. Then they started importing on a onesie twosie basis. SIG 550-551 series rifles, they would import some Sauer action rifles, although much smaller in quantity, and the SSG 3000 made in uh, Germany by SIG Sauer GmbH. Slowly, they would start tra to transfer some of the production stateside. And so then they started making the SIG 556, not SG 556, that is SIG 556. And of course, the SSG 3000, but with a cheaper, well, everything. So they were trying to take that expensive import market item and bring it to the American public. Well, that wasn't really working out because the market didn't favor their stuff as much as later on. So at this point, we've established that there is uh, Sig Arms USA, there is Sig Arms Switzerland, and there's also Sig Sauer GmbH in Germany. And around 2000s in this time frame, uh, another company came about, l and Holdings, that bought out uh, SIG Arms and the Swiss SIG Arms and also SIG Sauer GmbH in Germany. Uh, despite these all being separate companies, they were then swept under this one umbrella. And so right now, SIG, S-I-G, although they do produce food processing or food packaging items, uh, their train production side has actually been bought out by Fiat. 
Um, the German firm, Sig Sauer GmbH, has closed as of 2020. And the U.S. firm, of course, changes its name to Sig Sauer Inc. out of New Hampshire, is its own entity producing a whole host of American-made firearms. And the P3, P320, the MPX, MCX, all of these are all American-based designs. No longer do they make any SIG 556s. Um, and they've retired a lot of those old world designs that came about. Uh, they do, however, uh, revive some of them every now and then to see if the market uh, still likes them. For instance, they do make a new version of the SIG P210, Although it shares some characteristics with the old school Swiss P210, it is not the same pistol. Uh, where does this go? I mean, the interesting thing is the European branches, of course, the German branch is entirely shut down. The Swiss branch is a tiny, tiny office compared to what it used to be, but they still produce the um, these lovely rifles. Six Hour AG is the Swiss one. And of course, you've got the giant in the room, which started from the most humblest of roots of all three of these entities. Six Hour Inc., based in uh, New Hampshire, in America, who now manufactures a whole host of uh, tactical, sporting, and whatever's types of firearms out there um, in order to answer a market's demand. So, at the end of the day, if Sig and Sauer wanted to make some money... They most certainly did. But the money was made in America. USA, 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 USA. 916, this is 096, 4 Vic, 8 packs, red con 1, green to green, top copy, over. 096, this is 716, roger, over. 016, 091, 1 pack, green green, over. Two, one big door, two packs, break on one, over.